there appears to be an oscillating waveform that runs through life and matter, kind of a fundamental waveform, a sinusoidal curve, in and out and around about, kind of a thing. You know what I'm talking about? For instance, mankind, I'm trying to get comfortable here. Mankind has an 80 year cycle and a grand cycle which consists of four 20-year cycles. And it forms a oscillating waveform. So we have a period of evidence, 20-year period of evidence, 20-year period of reflection. 20-year period of evidence, 20-year period of reflection. And uh, an uptime and a downtime all around the downside. And currently, right now, we're at a point that would be equal with the 1940s. Excuse me, is that right? No, 1930s, late 1930s, 1938 would be the, the opposing year. So you can, a lot of things that happened in the 30s, late 30s, are happening now. And people are, the level of anxiety is going up. People are becoming very anxious. This could very easily turn to panic. So what we need is a rule and a guide to keep us on our way, keep us steady on the way, keep eyes on the road, hands on the wheel, right? Keep your eyes on the screen and your fingers on the keyboard. Uh -huh. Yeah, hang in there, stick with it. Need a rule and a guide. And the best one I can recommend, and I know this is probably going to send a lot of people running for the hills. I'll lose a lot of follow, more followers on Twitter. Twitter. But the best rule of the guy that I can recommend once and time and time again is Matthew 5, 6, and 7. Uh, but it's true, you know, because it's a non-materialist statement of creed. And when things start to panic, when people... When the going gets tough and and rough, and you don't feel like you're ready, check out the, those three chapters. They're, it's like it's paranormal. It's supernatural. It's a supernatural invocation, and it's about how not to lose your head. So anyway, this reciprocating waveform goes through everything back and forth and around about. And there, what's been trying to get out of my head is this idea that there's a particle. There is no particle, it's a fractal. It's all connected as fractals. And water is an amazing demonstration of this. In fact, we're so much, there's so much of us is composed of water, but we're basically, I would say water beings mostly made up of water, and water has this amazing ability to form these intricate patterns, connections through it, through the hydrogen bond, which makes us want to take a closer look at hydrogen. In my last video, I were talking about the uh, structure, structure of liquid water, and the piezoelectric effect, how when you compress this structure in water, it emits energy. And this is what we find in the succussion phase of the homeopathic remedy, is that it's inducing this energy that's forming these patterns and acting like an antenna array. It's emitting air radiation. We know it's emitting air radiation because we've detected it. It's been measured. Tritium was measured by the Kant Foundation coming out of the uh, homeopathic radium, radioactive tritium. These are, this is tritiated, these are tritiated solutions that we're dealing with. Tritiated solutions, ionic liquids. So anyway, the water is a very interesting thing. The next thing I wanted to uh, talk about in regards to that is the role that hydrogen plays. Hydrogen is a transducer and it's a, the, basic element of periodic table, right? It's like number number one. Hydrogen is the God particle. You can say you know what the God particle is now. 
That's number one. Hydrogen has a, a tetrahedral shape to it. Structure. And the structure is the basic building block of, of matter. Of all essence and being is the basic building, the basic structure. I'm I, I'm clamping up. I'm just cramping up. This is such a trial. <laughs> Yeah, so feel sorry for me. So anyway, water has this ability to absorb energy and send it back out again as a different form. When I was a little kid, I'm going to get off on this track again, but when I was a little kid, I would like to get up real early in the morning and sit on the heat register and read a comic book. And the house would be real quiet when the, when the fan wasn't blowing. And the, the heat would shut off as it's adjusting its temperature. I was sitting over the banister reading a comic book. Not the banister, the register, the heat register. Grating in the floor. And crouched there and in the quiet of the house and I hear this music. It what sounds like music coming from my from the other end of the house. And so I track it, started tracking it down. It's coming from my brother's room, a pair of headphones hooked up to a crystal radio. Crystal radio is a uh, receiving device. The original radio was run off a of crystal and it has, it has no out, it has no power source. It has no, like a, you don't plug it in, it doesn't use a battery. It just works off the radio waves in the air, magnetism in the air. Isn't that amazing? When you think about it, I, I could hear it it had been amplified enough that I, there was no power amplification on it. I mean, all the amplification was done out uh, like Tesla, you know, right out of midair. Well, the homeopathic remedy as it's structured is doing a similar thing through the, the, basically the hydrogen atom within the uh, H2O molecule, right? So the question is, what is it about hydrogen that does this? Hydrogen is the closest element to plasma. In other words, the, the flip, the phase flip is closer in hydrogen than anything else. So it very quickly converts to electrons. We know that because of the demonstration given at the, by the Hindenburg. Thank you very much. Chris Gut, Danke schön. <laughs> yeah, the Hindenburg. Hydrogen, a big hydrogen balloon blew up. So anyway, that's where these electrons transduce through. And uh, it's basically taking the plasma made through molecular dissociation from the solute, being the starting ingredient in the homeopathic remedy of the solute, turns to plasma by molecular di dissociation it forms this crystalline grid within the uh, structure of the water. And this is the basic charge and structure of the homeopathic remedy. This is how it works. And we know, it, as I said before, we know it because we've actually measured the radiation coming off these things. And what's interesting is that in time it grows. So what, we're th what we think is happening is that it's, it's uh, actually being powered out of the uh, Schumann resonances. The background radiation has transformed itself through the crystalline structure, hydrogen bonded structure of the water molecule. Isn't that cool? So speaking of water being the ultimate conveyance of energy, there's a local firm here in uh, Portland, Oregon, that's come up with this brilliant idea This is where it gets good. Strap yourselves down. It's come up with this brilliant idea of setting up hydroelectric generators on the water pipes. They want to plan on generating a couple million dollars worth of electricity off of the pressure in the water pipes underneath Portland, Oregon. <laughs> and 
my question is, well, has anybody asked them what this is going to do to water pressure? These miniature hydroelectric generators, pumps, in other words, reverse pumps that run generator, electrical generators. We could generate electricity off that. You know, that's occurred to me before. Why not stick one on, stick a little one on the on your tap and you just turn on the tap when you want some of the spare electricity, like when the lights go out, you know, and you want to read your kids a bedtime story. Plug it into the tap hydroelectric generator. <laughs> You know, why, why don't they, speaking of that, why don't, why don't they uh, install um, uh, generators, electric generators on the sides of houses, run off of uh, natural gas? Save a few lives, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, the big news of the day is everybody's going crazy. So I don't know what I'm going to do about that. It's like a chain reaction. Um, it, it looks like a chain reaction. It looks like it started with Trump. So having this chain reaction driving everybody into a panic, causing chaos. This is a typical behavior of narcissists to cause chaos. And this president of ours is a clinically diagnosed narcissist. What are we going to do about it? You know, he, he's he's not a, he's not all alone. The country's full of these narcissists. Narcissism is a very common state among Americans, from what I can tell. I've I've been around the world a few times. Well, not completely around the world, but I've been to a few countries. And nar Americans have every reason to be narcissists. They think the greatest country on the face of the earth. We're the greatest country on the face of the earth. It's like, come on, give it a rest, you guys. You can take it easy, will you? You can get us all in trouble. So it's like this, this chain reaction. You know, then now there's all this um, revelation of character, of bad character, bad judgment. All this bad judgment is, is suddenly burbling to the top. All these people are being indicted and at the highest levels, indictments and charges and investigations and everything. It's a, kind of like almost like a pogrom, isn't it? Well, I've only got 12 minutes in there today, but I wanted to say hi to all my friends and give me a little feedback. Put something in the commentary. Write something or, or make a video attacking me. <laughs> no, just don't do that. I've had enough of that. Don't want to even joke about that. 